Hi, I'm Alex and this is Tank Tested, and today I'm going to explain how to mount a staghorn fern, like this one. I'm also going to go through the care for a plant like this, and we'll get into why I've mounted this plant vertically like you saw in the thumbnail of this video, with the plant's leaves hanging downward. It all has to do with how they grow in nature. But these are the tools we'll need for this project, so let's get started. First, you'll need a bit of wood to mount your fern on. It should be about twice the size of your pot. I cut this piece of oak from a tree that fell in my backyard. But because watering the staghorn will get the wood wet, I'm going to seal it. This finish is a mix of linseed oil and beeswax, and I'll be applying it with this paintbrush. I've also got a little pile of dried moss here. This moss will hold water between waterings. And to secure it to the staghorn, we've got some fishing line. To mount the board, I've got this mounting bracket. And then there are six screws. We'll get to what those are for later. The first step of creating this staghorn display will be prepping this board. Now, it's not strictly necessary, but using something to seal the wood will help this setup last just a little bit longer. As I prep my wood, I think it's a great chance for us to talk about what wood you should select. I picked this piece of wood because I think it'll be aesthetically pleasing on my wall, and it's about twice the size of my current staghorn. Staghorns grow pretty large, so if you don't select a piece of wood that's at least twice the size of your plant, you're going to have to remount it quicker than you'd like. You also want to select a piece of wood that won't rot when exposed to water, which means hardwoods tend to do much better than softwoods. If you can, go with a cedar or an oak rather than a pine. Here you can see I've already mounted a bracket on the back of my slab of wood. This is how I'll hang the setup on my wall. Now so I don't scratch my table, I'm also covering the bracket with a little bit of painter's tape. That way it won't do any damage while I attach my staghorn. Okay, so it's finally time to talk about staghorn ferns. Now, when you get a staghorn, you'll generally get it in a pot, but that's not how staghorns grow. They have an up and down, and you need to figure out what the orientation of your staghorn is. And the key to that is to figure out where it's growing from. You see this tiny little leaf? That is a new leaf, and staghorns grow new leaves from the top of the plant. So you need to mount your staghorn with that in mind. With new growth at the top of the plant, and old growth towards the bottom. Now that we know the orientation of our staghorn, let's take it out of the pot. We can put that pot aside, we probably won't be using that again. And uh, we can start figuring out where we want to place the staghorn on our wood. Once you're happy with the staghorn's placement, you want to flatten the root mass a bit. You do that by putting your fingers in the center of the root mass and pulling out. Now you are going to rip a couple of roots, that's normal, but the staghorn will recover. Your goal is to turn the root ball from being a vertical root structure to a horizontal one. That way the staghorn can fit as snugly as possible against your board. Okay, for this next step, I've filled up this little container with some water. And we're gonna take our dried moss and we're going to rehydrate it. To do that, it's pretty simple. Just add it into the water. With completely dry moss, it may take 10 to 15 minutes for it to fully rehydrate. That doesn't mean the moss is coming back to life. It's still dead, but now it will hold water. This will help keep your staghorn hydrated between waterings, and it looks pretty nice as well. But how are we going to hold all of this together? I mean, this is hanging on a wall after all. Well, that's where these screws come into play. We're going to put six screws all around the staghorn. Now you could use staples or nails, but I have screws on hand, so that's what I'm going with. Pick a final position that you want your staghorn to hang in, and then mark out where you want to install your screws on the wood. The screws will be used as an anchor for your fishing line, so you want them to be spaced evenly. Then get your staghorn out of the way. From here on out, it's going to be kind of a mess, but I tried to clean up as much as I could.
Because I didn't want to split my wood, I am going to pre-drill the holes in my slab. I also don't want to drill through the wood into my nice table, so I'm marking out the depth that I want to drill to with painter's tape. That way I drill down to the tape and stop. No risk of going into the table below. Now this isn't a plant tip, it's more of a woodworking tip. But if you're planning on working with end grain wood, which is what we have here, that's why you can see the growth rings of the tree, you have to be particularly careful of the wood splitting. And you can actually already see splits in the wood from when it dried. So if you don't pre-drill your screw holes, you're going to split the wood even worse. Trying to keep this workspace clean is kind of a losing battle, but you know, this is for a video, so I wanted it to look as nice as I could. Now, as you install the screws, keep in mind that you are going to be wrapping fishing line around them. So you don't want to tighten them, you want to leave room for the string to wrap around the screw heads. I've found that an eighth inch to a quarter inch is plenty for your fishing line. You also want to use screws or nails with a flat underside rather than the tapered underside that a lot of wood screws have. That way the fishing line doesn't slip off it. To mount your staghorn, you want to start with a bed of moss. Now this moss doesn't have any nutritional value to the staghorn. All it does is provide a bed that will stay moist longer. That will help your staghorn survive if you go a little bit too long between waterings. Now it's time to put the staghorn in place for the final time. Make sure you orient it correctly. Then surround the staghorn's root ball with moss. You want about a one inch thick layer of moss all the way around your root ball. And the moss serves three purposes. First, it's aesthetically pleasing. Second, it holds water. And third, its fibers hold in the dirt in your root ball. That means every time you water your staghorn, dirt doesn't come pouring out. So even though it's a little messy right now, it's better to overdo it with the moss than underdo it. You'll regret being stingy later. Once your moss is in place, it's time to use fishing line to hold the whole thing together. Tie a loop in the fishing line and put it on one of your screws. Then tightly wrap your fishing line around the base of the staghorn, being sure to go underneath the leaves. This will be the only thing tying your staghorn to the wood, so you want to do it tightly. You also want to crisscross your fishing line enough times that it holds down all of the moss. Now turn your staghorn vertically and make sure that it doesn't slip. If it doesn't, you're good to go. Now we can mount the staghorn on a wall. And here is my mounted staghorn fern. I think it looks pretty good. Picking the right location for your staghorn is probably the most influential decision you'll make in terms of the success of this plant, and that's because they're relatively easy to care for. Your staghorn will need to be in a bright room, but not in direct sunlight. Remember, these are epiphytes, which means they grow on trees. So in nature, they grow in the shade of the tree's branches. And their three-dimensional structure will really catch the sun's rays over the course of the day. Now in terms of plant care, staghorns require regular watering. During the summer, once a week is adequate, and during the winter, once every two to three weeks is plenty. You can water the staghorn in place by saturating it with a mister, or you can take it into the shower or sink and soak it for a few minutes in room temperature water. Either way, you should let the staghorn dry out between waterings. If your staghorn leaves start to turn black, that's a sign of root rot, which means that you're overwatering your staghorn. They're pretty drought resistant, so it's better to err on the dry side rather than the wet. Now, in terms of the plant structure, there are two types of leaves on the staghorn. There are the long leaves that are the fertile leaves. That's where the fern's spores will form. Unlike flowering plants that reproduce with flowers, ferns reproduce with spores on the undersides of their leaves. The other type of leaf are the sterile shield leaves. These will grow into large discs and then dry out. You shouldn't remove the dried out leaves, they'll turn brown, but that's a part of the life cycle of the staghorn. In nature, those dried out leaves will help to collect falling debris, which can act as a fertilizer to the staghorn. 
To simulate that, you'll need to fertilize your staghorn a couple times a year. You can do that with a liquid fertilizer, and by occasionally slipping a small piece of banana peel behind some of those fronds. If you want to create your own mounted staghorn fern, I've left links in the description for everything you'll need. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you consider subscribing, and if you want to support me, you can join my Patreon, like all of these lovely people. Thanks so much, and I hope you have a great day.